the same page with transformations, talk about some vocabulary with it, and um, making sure we can do some of the basics with transformations. And then throughout the next few weeks, we'll do a deep dive of the three types of transformations we're going to look at and go from there. Okay. Now, when we say the word uh, transformation out there, okay, when we say the word transformation, what comes to mind maybe with the word transformation, anybody? What comes to mind with transformation, right? I'm sorry? Movie? Moving, moving, sorry, yeah, moving, thank you. Moving, most definitely moving. Uh, when you think of moving, I saw your hand go, right? right? Literally like moving left, right, up and down. Any other type of movement maybe happen? Flipping? Got anything else? There's one other type of movement out there. What's that? Growing and changing. Okay, that is another type of movement out there. We'll talk about that here in just a second. So there's actually one more other type of transformation out there. Rotating. Spinning it, rotating it, right? Okay, so we do have four types of transformations out there. I heard the moving left, right, up and down. I heard the flipping. I heard the growing and changing shape there. That's going to be one. And then the spinning, rotating one. So we're going to talk about those here today. Now, that's four. Three of these four we're going to look at uh, here right now. That fourth one, uh, we're going to talk about down the road. That fourth one's not going to fit into what we're talking about right now. And I'll talk about the difference why one is odd man out. Okay? So let's go through and talk about it. Pre-image versus the image. So we have a transformation. A transformation is all those things you just rattle it off. Can anybody tell me the difference between what is a pre-image and what is an image? An image before it's changed. That sounds actually fairly solid. So a pre-image, what that is, is a figure before a transformation occurs. Yeah, that's pretty much about it, what Jillian suggested there. Okay, so I'm going to give you some type of figure, okay? or maybe I'll give you some coordinates. It doesn't have to be a figure, it could be just some coordinates. That's the pre image, your starting figure. Then a transformation occurs. It could be that left, right, moving up, down. It could be a spin, it could be a flip. All right? Something happens to it, and then mm -hmm. you, get, you drop the pre, and then you get an image. And so we say the image is the resulting uh, figure. then is uh, the resulting figure from a transformation. Okay? So something happened to it, that's that image, we call it, that's that resulting figure from a transformation. All right, so <clears throat> what type of transformations are out there? That's what, what, is what we're going to do here today. We've got three transformations we're going to do. There's a fourth one out there. We're going to hold off on that fourth one, though. The three that we're going to look at today well, on that front side here, we're going to walk through it, and then we'll come back around and talk about it. On that first one that we have here, we're going to do, well, the first type of transformation we call a translation. That translation is what Zariah said first off, moving it left, right, or up or down. That is what we call a slide as well. It's a translation, but if you're just going to move it left and right, up and down, is that going to change shape or change its size at all? No, it's going to stay the exact same thing, right? 
just going to move left, right, up, and down. Okay, we'll come back to it. Um, then, another one is a reflection. She said a flip earlier. Is a flip, a reflection, going to change its shape or size at all? No, if you could, if you could, you know, kind of like uh, rubber stamp this and just pull, flip it over onto the other side, if you like fold your paper along the line, and you stamp that triangle on the other side of it, it's going to be the exact same thing, right? Just the orientation got flipped, right? So it's the exact same shape. All right, and the other one we're going to do, I think is on the last page, is a, there it is, I think uh, Carter suggested to it, is a rotation, a spin, right? Is a rotation going to change the shape or size at all about that? No, we're just going to turn that uh, picture, that, that figure, we're going to turn it 90 degrees, 180 degrees, but it's not going to change the shape or size of it, is it? So those three transformations that we're going to look at here today, those three are what we call, right here, anisometry. So let's tag that real quick. We're going to say that that is an isometry. So what that is is um, a transformation which preserves the shape and size of the figure. And when I say I preserve the shape and size of the figure, well, what are we talking about? We've used this word quite a bit throughout the first month or so. The pre-image and the image are congruent. Okay? We're talking about congruence. Okay? If the image and the pre-image are not congruent, it's not an isometry. So I'm going to use that word isometry then quite a bit over the while because that's what we're doing with those three transformations. So those are transformations that are considered to be an isometry. There's a fourth one that is a transformation but not an isometry. Dylan, you mentioned it. It's where the shape and size are changing on us. Anybody remember or know what that is? Where the uh, size of it does change? The size of it changes? You guys do it all the time, especially on your phones. Take this one here. What am I doing with it? <laughs> Stay in the same shape, right? But what am I doing? I'm changing the size of it, right? So, anybody have an idea what this is called? What type of transformation this is called? Anybody go to the eye doctor lately? And when the eye doctor sometimes puts those drops in your eyes, it dilates. dilates, right? And what happens? Your pupil goes from like this and enlarges. And the reason why it hurts a little bit is because your pupil enlarges and allows more light into it. And um, that's why it just kind of hurts a little bit, a little bit until your pupils get back to your normal size, okay? So what that is, is a dilation, okay? So a dilation, when you're on your phones and you zoom in, zoom out, and all that, that's a dilation. Your, your shape's not changing, is it? What's changing? You're zooming in or zooming out, right? You're pinching to zoom. That's a dilation. So um, that is a transformation, but it is not considered to be an isometry, okay? We'll talk about that more later. That's going to be more of a second semester thing when we get into uh, some work with um, uh, trigonometry and whatnot. We'll get some more into that area. Okay. Today, though, let's do this. Take that first one. Follow the instructions. Let's just do a quick isometry. That is our first one. That's a translation. Now, you've done these. Should have done these before. Even if you haven't, the first one's pretty straightforward. If you haven't done it yet, go ahead. Follow the instructions. Are you able to follow instructions? Take it five units left and two units uh, down. And again, just quickly do it. Can you read the instructions and do what's being told to you? Okay? So make sure you can count. That's the other big thing. Can you count? One, two, three, four, five. One, two. One, two, three, four, five. One, two. And 
then we always connect it. I always have a few students that after they move it and then don't connect the points, always connect the points. Cool. And then I need to do one more thing to this. What you got there, Jordan? One more time. Which one should be? Uh, v should be one space higher. One, two, one, two. Oh, I can't do that, can I? Uh, I can't count. Thank you. Now, with that, I forgot to do one thing here. Try this again. Y, one, two. Y is fine, wasn't it? Okay. What else did I forget to do here? All right, when you do your image, how do I know which one is the image and how do I know which one is the pre image? It's all about your notation. So we got to look at our notation then. We talked about this a couple of times randomly throughout the semester already. What's the notation tell me? So on your notation, when you write the image, we denote it with those apostrophes. We call those primes. W prime, V prime, Y prime, and X prime. So make sure those primes are on there. What that tells us is that that is the image. If it does not have those primes on there, like the original figure is, this is what we call, again, the pre-image. A transformation occurred. And then, therefore, we call it the image. Okay. So as we work through here, please make sure you have your notations correct. Okay. Nothing crazy. All right, let's move around. Let's go and do number four. I got a bunch on this notes today. We're not going to do them all. Let's go and do number four, different notation style. Usually when you start looking at your uh, translation there, okay, all right, uh, you start off with words, and then at some point, maybe about seventh grade-ish or eighth grade, you move into that style right there. So what that's telling me here is a number four, take your pre-image, coordinates and apply that movement to it. So when they say x plus 6, y plus 1, what does that mean to do that? Hold on there, guys. Yeah, Um, what does that x plus 6, y plus 1 tell us to do in words? Which way are we going, guys? x plus 6 means what direction? Right. And y plus 1 means up. So, yeah, tell me which direction, not to say over. Over means which direction? Right. And y plus 1 means up. That's it. Go do it. We haven't done it yet. Go do it real quick. Okay. So, yeah, nothing absolutely crazy at all with that. Just follow exactly what you can say. That every x coordinate is going to give what to it? Plus 6 to the coordinates. So that's going to move it to the right 6 units. And every y coordinate is going to get a plus 1 to the coordinates. So that's going to move it up 1 unit. Okay? And then as you move those, pick a point and do exactly what you just told me. 6 plus 1, u prime. What is that? T prime? And then what? S prime? And take a step back, make sure you count it correctly, and then it should be an isometry. Again, it should be the same shape, same size, it should be congruent. Okay? If you see one that's a little funky, make sure you go back and check your math or counting skills, I guess. Alright? Alright, let's flip it. Let's do it. Top of the next page, all right? Don't have to give you a picture. I could just give you the coordinates. So let's take number six there and get me the coordinates of that triangle there. So on X prime, okay, you guys have heard in your 
six, seventh, eighth grade classes, like an input output machine. All right, um, when you guys have done the algebra parts of six, seventh, eighth grade, you plug in negative four into the x coordinate, you add three, and what do you get? So x starts off at negative four for that coordinate. Move it to the right three units, correct? So negative four plus three, what's it going to be at now? Negative one. And then you do the y coordinate. And what's going to happen to the y coordinate? Start at, starts off at zero. And what are you going to do to it? Minus five, right? And where is that going to be at now? Negative five. Nothing really crazy there. So you guys, again, have done this before. You plug in a number into some, what we call it, an input output machine. In return, you get a, an output. Run it through W, W prime. We start off with negative 5 for the x. Negative 5 plus 3 gives me, what is that, negative 2? And then 4 for the y. 4 minus 5 takes us to negative 1, right? So we start off with 4, we go down 5 units. And then lastly, v prime. Start with negative 2, what are we going to do there? To the right 3, so negative 2 plus 3. Oops, it's at 1, right? And we start off at 1, we go down 5, so 1 minus 5 takes me to negative 4. That's it, nothing crazy, okay? Just make sure you're adding in those signs correctly. Off of that, take it to 7, 30 seconds, go. Get me the coordinates of that quadrilateral, okay? Give me the coordinates of that quadrilateral, IHGF. We'll get the coordinates of the quadrilateral off of there. And again, on that image, um, make sure again, the small things we're going to be looking at, use that notation style correctly. All right, I prime, G, H prime, G prime, F prime. What's going to be true about all the x coordinates? They better stay the same, right? Because the x is, the translation rule says keep x the same. What's the only thing that's happening? Subtracting 1 on the uh, y coordinate, isn't it? Okay, so what do we got? Negative 1, 1, 2, and 2 my math as well. But that's it. Okay? Now work it backwards. This is a nice SAT question. Now on SAT, you don't get a lot of geometry questions, but if you're going to get a transformations question, it's going to be like more 89 there. Find me the rule. So number eight says, find me the rule that takes U B W to U prime B prime W prime. So how did you move? from one to the other, right? Either rule that took you from U V W to U prime V prime W prime. So when we say write me the rule, all right, what I'm usually looking for is a little bit more of a cleaned up rule like I did, been doing up there. X, Y, the pre, the pre-image rule, or sorry, the pre-image location takes me to what? So not so much you tell me in words, like you want left five and right, I'm sorry, left five and up two. I'm usually looking more a little bit of a fancy rule, all right? Something like that. So, follow a point. Follow a point. If you do your math right, check it with the next one. Pick that first point, u to u prime, and whatever rule you create, I would always suggest applying it to the next point in that triangle, or that quadrilateral. Make sure it works on there, because what usually I see students do is they strip up the negatives, because negatives always kill them. Okay? So, whatever rule you got there, make sure it works for V to V prime. Um, maybe WW prime, but usually it works for that first one. 
So u to u prime. Start off at negative 5, you get to 0. How'd you go from negative 5 to 0 then? Add 5. So I've got a plus 5. And then, Caden, how'd you go from negative 3 to 1 then? Negative 4. Okay. So if this is my rule, I'm going to go ahead and check it real quick to go from B to B prime. I'm going to plug in those numbers. So let's go check it. Negative 5 plus 5. Does that take me to 0? So far, so good. And then 1 minus 4. What's 1 minus 4 give me? Now that gets me negative 3, doesn't it? So does that give me that right coordinate there? What did you mean? Probably actually say plus four. plus four, I think, right? So that's where I always encourage you to check your rule at that second point. And then one plus four, one plus four takes me to that five. So <clears throat> what we're doing here is we're subtracting, okay? The way that we can always find that is to take that second coordinate, that image, 0 minus it, and then 1 minus it. And what happens to those two negatives? What happens to those two negatives? Yep. And that's where I'm getting that plus 5 and that plus 4. That's how you're getting that difference each and every time. Okay? Um, but again, I always encourage you to check your answer because I guarantee you I'm going to have that. Those are, not have, SAT is going to have those as, um, so we're looking for uh, the multiple choice answers are going to be ones that students are going to think are going to be those missing ones. Okay, take number nine real quick. Take number nine real quick and make me that rule. Okay, make me that rule that takes um, V of V prime and then check it with the uh, with that second point there. I always check it to make sure I'm, I'm doing it correctly. And again, you can always calculate that rule by taking the image minus the free image. That should follow it each time for you. 3 minus a negative 3 takes me to x plus 6. And then, whoops, yeah, plus 3. And then for the other one, negative 3 minus 0 takes me to just negative 3, right? And then I always check it right here. Negative 2 plus 6, and then what? 4, um, sorry, right here. 4 minus 3, that takes me to 1. Okay? All right, let's do some reflections. Those are all isometries. These are all isometries because it should be congruent, reflected over the x-axis. So I would always encourage you to highlight that first off with your pencil. If you want a color pencil to highlight your line of reflection, my color pencils are someplace around here. Okay? So I always highlight my line of reflection. So with my color pencil here, highlight the x-axis, boom. And then what are we doing? We're going to be flipping that like up vertically, right? So how far away is each point from that? Do you want to color pencil over here to highlight the x-axis or yourself? Okay. V is how far from it? One. So it's going to be one unit away. What we say is it's equidistant from the line of reflection. So V is one unit away. V prime is one unit away. U is how far away? from it. Two. two. So u prime is two. It's equidistant. And w is how far? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, and five. It is, again, equidistant to the line of reflection. So if you took your paper and folded it right on that line of reflection, the x-axis for that one, shouldn't that picture match up pretty exactly then? That is, again, congruent for that isometry. Highlight the next one. What's the line of reflection on the next one? Again, I always highlight it. 
you want that colored pencil, there it is. At least take your pencil and highlight it, okay? Just so your eyes are doing the right one, and then we're kind of flipping it horizontally. Now, with this one, what's going to happen with the image? Where's it going to land? I'm sorry? Right on top of it, isn't it? It's going to get a little messy. So again, this is where the importance of labeling your image is important. J to J prime, how far is J from the line of reflection? It's three away, right? One, two, three. One, two, three. Go ahead, yes. Yeah, Never have to ask. J, J prime, right? Three away, three away. Three on the left, so three on the right. I is how far? One, I prime. And H is how far? One, two, one, two. Dun, dun, dun. Always take a step back. Should be the same picture, should it? Should be congruent. If it's not, you probably just can't be wrong. Okay? Now, this brings us into the next one where we've been working with making sure you know vertical and horizontal lines. When we say x equals negative 1, go draw, go graph that line and what does x equals negative 1 look like? A vertical line or a horizontal line? It's a vertical. It's a vertical line. x equals negative 1. We want every single point that has x equals negative 1 on it. So we get a vertical line that has x equals negative 1. So that last topic we've been doing leads us into the transformation part. Once you identify the line, it's no big deal. It's exactly what we've been doing. But you've got to make sure you're doing the right vertical line or horizontal line. And then after that, g is how far away? <clears throat> Just 1. So g prime is 1. f is what? 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. And E is what? 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And where is H prime going to be? So it's not going to move, is it? It's not going to move. Connect the points. In what shape should you see? The exact same shape, right? If it's not the same shape, we did something wrong. This is an isometry. And it appears to be roughly the same shape as my line is straight. How about 13? What's y equals negative 1 looks like? Vertical or horizontal line? So what? Horizontal line, right? So draw on that horizontal line. Again, that's what we have our pencils. I got colored pencils here for it. Draw in the line of reflection. Don't try to keep track of that in your head. Draw in that line of reflection. Okay. And then Flip it over that. Now we're kind of flipping vertically, aren't we? L is how far away? So L prime would be 3. 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Bless you. M is also 3. M prime is 3. K. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And what's the last one? N. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Connect the dots, take a step back. Do we roughly have the same shape there? The better is an isometry. That's it. Reflections right now are fairly straightforward. Okay? This is, should be, again, a review for you. Should be. But if not, it's not right now. It's too bad. Okay? All right. Let's go to the next page. On top of the next page, all right, what do we have there? We have a, oops, one second there. Top of the next page, write me the rule. So on that rule there, to describe the reflection, I'm looking for you to tell me it's reflected over what? X equals 5, Y equals negative 3, Y axis, X axis, you tell me. What is the reflection here? Reflected over x-axis, I heard. So if you were to take your pencil and put it on the x-axis, would that make sense? Most definitely would be. Yeah, that's the reflection over the x-axis. 
That's the rule. That's all I need to see from you. Okay. How about the next one? Now, please don't tell me it's the y-axis. Where's that vertical line at? I would draw it in where that line of reflection is. And what is that again I heard? X equals reflected over. X equals negative 1 I heard. Vertical lines are always x equals. Real quick reminder, what's the vertical line slope? All vertical lines are slopes of what? Undefined. All right. Okay, let's do some rotations now. With rotations, we're going to have a buddy with us. Anytime we do rotations here, I'm going to have this little box of paper out. It's what we call patty paper. It makes doing our rotations uh, a lot nicer. So if you've never used patty paper, I'll talk about that in just a second. And when I say patty paper, it's transparent. It is just like hamburger patty paper. Okay? So this is not even So we're gonna use patty paper to help us do our rotations here today. And if you ever need more patty paper, my box of patty paper will be out as we work through this. So how do we use our patty paper here to help us do rotations. Okay, first off, you got to know which direction you're rotating. Okay, we see counterclockwise rotations, we see clockwise rotations. And if you know the directions, the difference between clockwise and counterclockwise, don't stare at the clock. Okay, don't stare at your watch, especially if it's an Apple Watch or your phone, because you probably don't have um, the clock on your phone. You just have a digital clock versus an analog clock. All right, so let's talk about this. How do we use patty paper here to help us out? Okay, so what we're going to do then with our patty paper, let me go get a bigger piece of patty paper here. Let's see if I'm going to figure my board out when I start writing on this. Even though I have to use it. Okay, this patty paper you're going to use all throughout, so uh, you can use it for multiple sheets. Okay, with the patty paper here, what we're going to do then is we're going to put two things on here, okay? We're going to for sure um, put on here, trace onto the patty paper. We're going to trace on there is the uh, pre-image, okay? That's going to be one thing. And then the other thing we want to put on there is something to keep track of with our rotation, our degree of rotation, 90 degrees, 180 degrees, 270, 400, whatever we need to do. So we're going to put two things on here, okay? The two things I'm going to put on here is this here. The origin. Okay, so I'm going to put a mini xy axis right there. And then the other thing I'm going to do is trace onto there my pre image. And that's what I'm asking you to do as well. Trace onto the, your patty paper your origin with the mini xy axis right there. And also trace onto there your pre-image. Those are the two things you're always going to want on there um, off to have on your patty paper. Okay? So I freaked it out, but I didn't screw up. So on my patty paper, I've got my pre-image on here. And also on there, I've got the mini XY axis. The mini XY axis, right there where the origin is at, that's going to allow me to keep track of my rotation. If I don't have that mini XY axis on there, I don't know if I've actually turned it 90 degrees or did I turn it maybe 70 degrees. But by keeping it exactly 90 or tracing on there the, the notes, I'm going to be able to line this up, right? 90, 180, 270. And where do I go back at? I'm back at 360, right? So when we get ready to do our rotations, you're keeping track of making sure that the origin is on top of the origin of your notes. That's how you're going to keep track of things. And rotate it whatever direction it tells you to go. And then however many degrees you need to rotate it. So let's think about this. How much is each quadrant? Each quadrant is how many degrees? 90 degrees, right? It's perpendicular. Perpendiculars create 90 degrees. So every turn of your paper then is a 90 degree rotation and we're back at 160. So let's do our first rotations. I know some of you already got that. Uh, what does it say us to do there? Turn it what? Turn it 90 degrees. 
counterclockwise. So I'm back at it. Okay, we're back. Whoops, not that. Try this again. Oh, oh that's not at all what I wanted to do. Hit the wrong button. <clears throat> Try this again. Okay, so I'm back at it. All right, and I want to turn it. You said 90 degrees. What? Counterclockwise. So counterclockwise. Okay, this is clockwise because the clock rotates that direction. So I'm going to turn my paper this direction, but keep an eye on to make sure my origin is on top of my origin. So then I'm going to start here. Everything's on top of each other. Then I'm going to rotate it such that origin's on top of origin and that mini x, y axis is all lined up nice and neat. And when you do that, what should then happen is your pre-image has rotated counterclockwise. And then take your pencil, slide it underneath your patty paper, and you should be able to tell where those points are lining up. And they should line up at nice locations. Um, they will not line up at like halves or thirty-fourths or anything like that. If they are, uh, what that usually means is you just didn't draw out a stellar picture sometimes and just eyeball it then. It should line up at nice whole number integer locations. Okay, so rotate that. Uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise. Slide your paper, your pencil underneath the patty paper, and then start marking um, your image coordinates. And as you start marking your image coordinates, you end up with your uh, G is somewhere in the first quadrant, I believe, right? And I can't do that easily enough with my board like this. So you're going to have to kind of help me out at the same time here. Okay, somebody, let's see if we all agree here. Where did G prime end up at? G prime ended up where? Three what? Three one. Do we agree G prime is at three one? Yeah. Okay, sh show me some light. Three one. Okay, now where did D prime end up at? Four negative two. Four negative two. Where did E prime end up at? Three negative three. Yes, no. Yeah. Uh, that is E prime. And then F prime was at uh, what? Two negative two. Two negative what? Two negative three. Okay. Two. No, e, prime. e prime was at two negative three. Yeah. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. <clears throat> two negative three. Okay. E that was a e prime. And then f prime we we said was what? Um, one ne one negative two. You said right? Okay. My bad. Because it's not congruent there. All right. So we rotated that thing around the origin such that it lands right there. Okay. So we're going to continue with that tomorrow. We are going to run out of time here. All right. We'll continue with the rotations tomorrow. And with that, we're going to run out of time. We'll continue on with the rotations tomorrow. Pass out the notes. Oh, sorry, the assignment here for you just hold on to that padding table. Keep with those notes. Um, using it, you can get quite a few of those rotations along there at once. Okay? If you need more, not a big